So please allow me, my dear friends, to introduce our topic presenter for the day, for the afternoon, Professor Emeritus, University of Southern Mindanao, or USM, former vice president. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to introduce to you our topic presenter, who is an esteemed researcher and advocate for agriculture innovation, hailing from the Research and Development and Extension Department of the University of Southern Mindanao. Yes, with the illustrious academic journey, Dr. Balan has amassed a wealth of knowledge and experience that spans across continents and disciplines. Dr. Balan actually holds a PhD in agriculture with a specialization in plant breeding from Ehemi University in Japan, marking the culmination of a journey that begins with a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture where he graduated cum laude from the University of Southern Mindanao. His academic pursuits continued with a Master's of Science in Agronomy from the University of the Philippines and Los, in Los Baños and the Master's of Science in Agriculture from Kagawa yeah. University, also in Japan. Throughout his career, Dr. Balan has been recognized on both national and international platforms for his outstanding contribution to the field of agriculture. As a testament to his dedication and ex excellence, he has been honored with prestigious awards, including the 2023 Outstanding Professional of the Year in the field of agriculture, by the Professional Regulations Commission, the 2023 DOST Picard First Prize for Best R&D Paper and the Research Category for the 2022 uh, PAGASA Award for Outstanding Government Worker by the Civil Service Commission. And additionally, he was bestowed the 2021 William D. Dar Research and Development Award and has been lauded for seven best papers in the research or development category. Dr. Balan, my dear friends, expertise transcends actually uh, different borders. Now, as evidenced by his tenure as an international scientist at esteemed institutions such as the National Institute of Crop Science and, and Nagasaki Science Foundation in Japan, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in Japan, and the International Works okay. Research Institute, University mm -hmm. of the Philippines, Diliman, and the University of Southern um, in the down in the Philippines. Currently serving as the program leader at the NICER Cacao R&D Center, Dr. Balan's field of specialization and interest encompass genetics, agronomy, biology, cell and molecular biology, molecular diagnostics, microbial ecology, and plant pathology. His impactful research has been disseminated through over a dozen articles published in ISI index international journals accumulating more than 320 citations. And furthermore, Dr. Balan has secured over 18 research grants from various government funding agencies, totaling over 160 million pesos to support his investigations into the commodities such as milkfish, coconut, oil palm, cacao, banana, mango, and others. And additionally, he is an innovative inventor holding three patents and 11 utility models for his groundbreaking inventions in the agricultural sector. Dr. Balan is a visionary leader in agricultural research and development whose unwavering commitment to advancing the field has left an indelible mark on the industry. It is an honor to have him here today to share his expertise and insight, insights with us. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Balan for his presentation on cacao fermentation, drying, and bean grading technology. Audio, sir. I think uh, you have a problem okay. with your audio. Okay, okay. okay. I'm, I'm muting myself now. Can you hear? Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for that introduction, sir. So, good afternoon sa lahat. Magandang hapon sa lahat. So, I found out that we have 439 uh, participants here plus the Facebook. And then, uh, I know for sure na iba-ibang tao dito, may, may iba-ibang level. So, I will speak, I will popularize and uh, make everything here understandable sa lahat. So, I'll be speaking 
uh, English, Tagalog, or Bisaya. Uh, anyway, I'll make this popular to everyone, understandable. So maraming salamat uh, to everyone. And uh, I would like, uh, before I proceed with this one, uh, because I'll be sharing to you today on this cacao bean fermentation, intermittent drying, and bean grading. So I'd like to take this opportunity, first of all, to acknowledge everyone here. First of all, the Philippine Cacao Industry Council, the, or the PCIC. We have the Philippine Cacao Industry Association, or PCIA. We have the USD Picard, who have been supporting us all along to have for the cacao uh, commodity and other commodities, of course. And uh, the University of Southern Mindanao, and he's been so uh, supportive. And we have our team, the NICER, or niche in the region for r and the cacao team for the project leaders, the staff, the research assistants, research aides, laborers, for the Department of Agriculture, for ATI, for that uh, supporting us, especially some training, and the Philippine uh, DA, Philippine Rural Development Program, or PRDP, who's been supporting itong cacao industry in this, different, uh, different uh, what do you call this, uh, sessions, cooperatives, and we have the Department of Trade Industry, and uh, we have also the private entities, the Marshman, Kenny Mercy, the Mihuas, and other entities there who has been uh, mentoring us with the different production as well as post-harvest processing, in which we become a benchmark already for uh, the sa ating mga uh, fermentation or post-harvest processes, but the production. And of course, we acknowledge the predecessors, the mga, uh, mga kasama natin, sa tawag to, sa industriya sa cacao marami kayo so thank you for this efforts in supporting cacao industry and uh, most especially uh i would like to uh, thank in here acknowledge special recognition to Steve uh, Debris and uh, uh he has been so he he gives a legacy to us for us Filipinos on the thing that he has shared to us and so uh which becomes uh will become a uh, a uh, big change uh, of the uh, of the post harvest processes in here so thank you steve and uh, of course we thank all the participants today uh, who are here na sa natin 442 na and still coming up and thank you for the opportunity na we could i could share to you what we have learned and we have discovered ganito um Tulad na sa mga lectures, I know for sure may mga kasama din dito na kasama sa trainings at saka, you know already, that my style of teaching, I am not the typical professor who just teaches you while sleeping. It so happened that you are online. And what do you call this? Uh, the most boring part in the lecture is online because you cannot interact. So I, I am an interactive teacher. So uh, Sir Blair, are you there? Sir Blair? Yes, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Sa iyo ko na lang itanong, but actually, this will transcend to over 400 people. Okay. okay. Alam natin yung mga beans, di ba? May yes, cacao sir. beans, coffee beans, mung beans. Okay. What is the most expensive vegetable in the world? Or what is the most exp what is the most ex expensive beans in the world? Coffee? coffee. Uh -huh. Another guess? Cacao. Cacao. Uh huh. Okay, meron. Oh, meron. No. Mercedes beans. <laughs> okay. 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 Of course, the, the most popular person in the world is Mr. Bean. Cacao. Okay, Mr. Mr. Beans. Bean. Okay, Mr. Bean. Okay. So just, uh, just to, just like an icebreaker for us because that's my style, really. And uh, people love, you know what? Even by when I lecture at UP or USM or anywhere in the conferences or in, in workshops, I've started with that. Jokes and if I see people sleeping and talking, that's where my jokes come out. Okay. So anyway, we are online, so um, let's proceed. So I'll be sharing to you about the science of cacao bean fermentation. Ah, uh, ah, uh, kasi sabi na lalo sa mga taga barrio, ah, pili mo mag, wala mo mag ferment. Eh, ang karami kasi sa 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 bundok ay basta pag harvest, ibila na lang sa araw para matuyo. Tapos Iba naman, kailangan doon mag, mag-ferment kasi may mangyayari. Okay, this afternoon I'll be sharing to you the science behind nitong kuan, yung pag-ferment. Okay, dito ngayon ang 
cacao. Meron tayong cacao. Tapos, then we harvest it. Tapos, maybe akin. Tapos, nilagay yung ikong beans dyan sa, dyan sa bucket. Tapos, sort out natin. Then, we put now in the box, wooden box, or any box there for fermentation. Sa loob ng fermentation box na yan, may mga milagrong nangyayari sa loob doon sa pulp. Okay. Doon sa beans na yan, sa kwento sa pulp, sa itong sa bean na yan. Ang bean na yan, may pulp siya at saka may yung, yung corn niya na beans. And may sugar. Sugar. May carbohydrate, pectins, milchilosis, organic acids, blah, blah, blah. At may mga mikrobyo na sa loob dyan na nagtatrabaho. Ang isa, klase ng mikrobyo ay ang yeast. Next is yung mga bakterya. Dalawang klaseng bakterya ang nagtatrabaho. Lactic acid bacteria, acetic acid bacteria. Tapos, during sa fermentation, may mga changes na nangyayari dyan ngayon sa loob pa doon sa fermentation, sa pag-perment. Nagsimula siya ng pH 3.6 pero aangat yan siya. Tapos, doon sa pag-perment yan, may mga flavors, aroma, mga iba pang mga molecules na nadevelop So, during fermentation. And so, pagkatapos ng fermentation, ilabas mo siya at i-dry hanggang makaabot ng 7%. Okay. And then, uh, ito nangyari. Let's take in here. This is very technical, pero I'll make this simplified para maintindihan nyo. Okay. So, ang alam natin, aerobic at anaerobic. Mga ganun, ano aerobic? So, big sabihin, may mga stages ito during fermentation process. Okay, ilagay natin. Ilagay na yung beans sa loob ng box. Ayan. May stage na. Tatlong stages. Anaerobic phase. Merong transition ng anaerobic. Anaerobic phase. At saka aerobic phase. Ano itong aerobic-aerobic? So, isimplify natin air or oxygen. Anaerobic. Walang oxygen, walang air. Nakapasok dyan. Tapos, itong anaerobic, may transition, palipat siya mula sa may walang oxygen, papunta sa oxygen siya. Tapos, ang nagtrabaho dyan ay lactic acid bacteria. Then, ilipat natin siya doon sa isang box after the taste. Tapos, tapos, air or oxygen yung max para makatrabaho si acetic acid. Okay. Himahimayin natin isa-isa. Unmute na lang yun. Paki-unmute na lang kung sinong controller, please. Okay. Then, we have here sa anaerobic phase, itong yeast, ang isang klaseng mikrobyo ang nagtatrabaho. Maraming klaseng, maraming species, maraming strains ang involved na yeast. Hindi lamang Kuan, yung isang kuan. Marami yan sila. Actually, sa loob nito, sa, sa loob nitong fermentation box, merong mababait, masisipag, mga asungot na mga makontrabida. Parang drama, may bida, may kontrabida ng mga bakterya. Kahit pa paano, may mga trabaho sila. So dito sa anaerobic, itong si yeast. Ang ginagamit ng yeast ay itong sugar. Yung glucose na yan. Tapos, kayo napapansin nyo, ah, uh, Maganda piliin niyo about 75% na hinog na na hinog na na pad kasi ang dami ng sugar doon compared doon sa 50% or hilaw na kwan at saka yung over naman. Mamaya ipakita ko sa inyo ang diferensya. Dahil nandoon ang sugar. Ang sugar ginagamit ang sa English substrate. O ginagamit ang sugar para sa tawag nito para sa chemical changes na mangyayari sa pag sa mga proseso. Dadaan ito sa tinatawag na glycolysis or yung sugar kinoconvert na doon na magiging pyruvic acid o na undergo sa pyruvate. Itong pyruvate, iba-iba ang iba-iba ang direksyon niyang pinupuntahan. Una, dadaan siya ito sa process na acetaldehyde na para mag-produce siya ng ethanol or ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Tapos, dadaan din siya pagka alpha keto acid para magproduce ng amino acid. Ang amino acid, ito yung mga molecule para magiging protein, protein. Okay. Mga protina, ganun. Then, then dadaan din siya sa acetyl coenzyme na uh, na pathway o sa daan para magproduce ng mga fatty acids, yung mga fats, mga fat mga diyan nandiyan. Oo. And then itong si ethanol kanina na produce ay dadaan ito. Ito ang gagamitin ngayon doon sa 
anaerobic anaerobic stage diyan para mag-produce ng acetic acid. May pinuputahan din siya. Okay. Now, that is during the 21st day, 24 hours. Then on the second day, yan, gumagana na si lactic acid bacteria dito sa transition. And itong pinipresent kayo ngayon are the latest pathway of the fermentation already. Then, ito yung, there are two types ng lactic acid bacteria. Itong homo-fermentative lactic acid bacteria at saka hetero-fermentative fermentative lactic acid bacteria o lab na lang. So again, sila din gumagamit ng sugar. Barihot lang ng sugar. Yan. Pero, et ano tong si homo-fermentative? Isang type lang ng uh, produkto niya ang maproduce itong sa lactate or lactic acid. Yan siya. Tapos, itong si hetero-fermentative, dalawang produkto niya. Si lactic acid at saka si ethanol. Okay. So, Again, may mga pathways dito sa loob tulad ng citric acid, makapag-produce ng acetic acid, dadaan siya sa pyruvic acid para mag-produce ng acetic acid. Okay. Day 3. Ngayon, uh, ililipat na ito ngayon ang ang uh, beans mula sa box na iyan sa new box. At ganito, para mag para ma-expose ang mga beans, ang mga beans na may bacteria, dapat mahanginan sila. Hindi basta na lang na ihulog mo dun dapat meron siyang air or oxygen para itong si acetic acid bacteria ay makapagtrabaho. Pag walang hangin, hindi siya makatrabaho. Kaya dapat ma-expose nila para mas quality ang trabaho ni acetic acid. Ngayon, si acetic, ayan na ngayon siya, na kanina ng ethanol na produce ng acetic acid at ibang produkto dito, papunta na sa acetic acid. Ayan siya. Kaya lumalabas niya yung mga bulak-bulak dyan, mga water dyan, carbon dioxide, mga amoy-amoy. Ayan siya dyan. Okay. So, during this time, tumataas yung temperature dyan sa processing. Okay. At least, yun yung foundation dyan. At naintindihan natin mamaya yung ibang data na ipipresento sa inyo. At saka mga pamamaraan, bakit maasim yung ating produkto. Okay. O hindi maasim. Okay. Ito yung sa ating sa Pilipinas. Nagsusurvey kami dito sa aming project, sa NICER project. Uh, NICER means in the region R&D. Needs Center in the region for R&D in Cacao sa University of Southern Mindanao. At nag-benchmarking kami sa different mga uh, producer, processors dito sa regions 11 and 12. So we found out na may iba-ibang pamamaraan talaga. So one is the, itong harvesting. Mag-harvest sila. Ang iba, in-store muna nilang araw o tawag season or sa Bisaya, itanpugan. Yung iba naman ay diretso pag pagwana pag breaking then they follow the pad breaking, bean sorting, at bago fermentation, may may iba ginagawa pang iba. Ang iba, diretso na i-ferment. Yung iba naman, i-drain nila ang mucilage para mabawas-bawasan daw ang sugar. Uh, at saka, kukuliktahin nila yung sap juice doon para gawing either wine or gawing vinegar, etc. Then here comes now the fermentation. The fermentation, iba-ibang ginagamit ng mga tao kasi Iba-ibang technology. Ngayon, ay iba-ibang ano itong mga iba-ibang ngayon? Iba gumagamit. Ang iba, hindi nagpe-ferment. Direkto na lang. Iba naman, gumagamit ng jute sack. Iba naman, gumamit ng basket. Iba naman, gumamit ng kahoy. Sa kahoy na iyan, iba-iba naman. Merong, merong mahogani, merong uh, durian, merong lawaan. Ayan. Then, may santol. Then, sa pagdadry, karamihan, continue, a lot, continuous sun drying. At ang sun drying, karamihan ginamit, ginagamit ay yung marami gumamit ng all weather or UV plastic dryer. Iba naman, diretso sa sun na yan dyan at uh, dina, dina dry. Drying up to 7 to 8% moisture content. Then, ito na ang resulta sa Survey. Ang napapansin nyo dito ay 80%, 80% dito. Karamihan ay maasim. Maasim. Makikita yung mga pula-pula dyan. Mga ba yun? Yun, maasim yan. Pati yung, without mentioning names, mga mga famous na mga chocolatiers natin dyan sa 11 and 12, maasim din sila. 
at wala hindi na exempt except itong mga may nakalagay na green dito at least acceptable na range na doon from 0.6 up to 6 at ito ang 6 is very ideal according to the chocolatier 6 pH yan siya so ilan lang yan sila diyan at wala nakakarating doon sa laga sa 6.6 or 7 na na pH ito yung ideal ito na acceptable siya so it, ito ibig sabihin na kaya uh, this has a bearing doon sa kuan sa mga processors sa Pilipinas and even internationally kasi pag masim kasi uh, iba iba depende sa iba kasi ako rastero nga din na they don't care kasi balagyan lang doon ng sugar at saka gatas chocolate na pero actually yung mga yung mga mga medyo deli delicate na mga chocolaters lalo pag sensitive sa mga ganyan ay talagang they are so particular with the quality of the beans physically and physical chemical and then so uh, yun ang challenge natin itong implication is that masim and uh, uh, iilan lang dito actually ito nakalagay ng 6.1 6.2 alam mo kung saan doon sa medyo cooler place doon sa mga kuan ka ibig sabihin may implication ito mamaya doon sa next na i, i, na i kuan ko na i present so so we here's a guy who came here in the Philippines along with uh, Chris and as nasanin ba na si Sir Chris kanina kanina yung yung kanilang how they meet and so I would like to thank again the generosity of uh, Steve and Chris to share the technology and so he came here uh, they came here to he came here in the Philippines of course he's a mentor of Chris who won the uh, that uh, gold prize because of his of mentoring him so Chris is also generous to share it to us and so he trained us. He, he came over here because this guy, as Chris already told a while ago, went to Chihuahua in the northern coastal region of Aragua State in Venezuela. And this place is, is known for its 400-year-old tradition of cultivating and producing cacao with high-quality beans. And they are so demand, uh, yung beans nila ay demand in demand. Pelas sa Europe. At saka, sinesearch ko, mahal talaga din ang presyo because of the quality that they have. So, Steve went there, immersed himself, and stayed for two years to uh, to study what they are doing. And so, so, he just focused himself to the details of it until he get uh, the idea or the, the technology in how to do it. So, he came, he, of course, he, he told already Chris, tinuruan niya, and also punta din siya sa USM along with the other faculty members of faculty researchers ng different universities and introduced to us the technology from pad selection to the uh, sorting to fermentation to drying, which is different, intermittent drying, and then bean grating, etc. So, but you can look at, can you see my face here? Oh, you see my face. Just like my face, I told Steve, you know, Steve, I am a skeptical scientist. I don't believe immediately on whatever uh, he said to me. I really had to investigate. That's why, uh, so he laughed also when I told that him, him, to him. So, so I told I'm skeptical. So it's really because I don't like the, also the Marit Marites technology. I'll just say it's gasoline and garito, garito daw. Gaya ko na, believe agad. So for me, I have to verify and validate. So what happened is that we, I get his, techno, uh, the, the protocol he has, and of course, with consultation during the training and some calls, if I do not know, for verification. And so here's the, uh, the new protocol based on what he has taught us. So in harvesting, we get the 75% maturity here generally and without seasoning then we break the pods we sort those we reject those and uh not good beans and we do not have uh, draining anymore we just go direct to the fermentation box and here's the the fermentation box we use that uh, lawa and box there and side is 1.5 and then the bottom is 2 inches yeah and it's a 50 kilogram and we do the two day anaerobic 
fermentation. Then three, day, three days and aerobic, uh, sorry, aerobic daily turnings. And we continue to monitor the, the, moni the monitor temperature manually and using data lag. And then we do the uh, uh, intermittent drying. So what is intermittent drying? This is the drying, not con uh, not continuous sun drying. There's only certain hours there for sun uh, drying. Then the bean temperature, as well as the ambient or yung temperature sa labas, kin kinukuhanan, then ditingnan muna yung uh, ambient temperature or temperature sa labas at temperature sa beans. Okay, every 30 minutes. Then, uh, according to instruction, na the bean temperature should not exceed 40 degrees. Then, bean turning to allow evaporative cooling. So, before it reaches the 40, it turn yung mga beans, ikwan siya. Turning means may left, right, up, down, just to have mix, another mixing of beans to allow other beans to be exposed to the sun and to allow also uh, evaporative cooling. Ano tong evaporative cooling here? During sa the allow exposure uh, to the sun and later on I will explain about evaporative cooling to have a uh, greater understanding. So when to do is uh, early morning to early afternoon. Then I called him, is it possible to have afternoon? He said it, it, it's okay. So we tried also. Then, then we, that was after when, uh, before noon, so we pile the beans, cover the beans, uh, we put below, uh, because it's just a, uh, what do you call this, on a small volume. So we put down sa, uh, what do you call this, uh, may, may shading down, hindi maulanan. Then, then we repeat the process daily until the moisture contest reach 7 to 8. So with that procedure, we tried to validate this one. We did 10 trials in mixed varieties. And these are just the summary of observations. In other words, uh, uh, we can we get the 5.3 to 5.4 pH when we extend to the af in the afternoon, which means uh, he was emphasizing also before that preferably the morning, which is already in, in which we're able to find out that the afternoon is not really good because of the very high temperature that allows the temperature of the bean to exceed the the ambient temperature. So uh, then the 5.6, about 5.6, morning only, uh, no afternoon, but the bean should not reach about 40 degrees. Then well, if we get we are able to get the six, at least six pH morning only with bean temperature of less than 35 degrees. So, in other words, in a 5.6, it's already acceptable for at least 5.6 over 6, yung acceptable sa, sa pH, according to literature. Then, so, because of that, we made experiment. We made comparative analysis between the conventional, yung ginagamit natin, at sa, sa new fermentation and drying approaches. Okay, ano ginawa? Ito yung conventional na uh, karamihan ginagamit. Okay. We use the same variety, the same pad maturity. Ang nag-differ lang sa kwan is that merong 4-day season storage kasi yun ang ginagamit iba. Then, uh, 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 no draining na siya. Then, ginagamit dito ng uh, lawaan na may 50 kilogram, 2-day anaerobic, 3-day aerobic daily. Ito, pariperyo kami dito so doon sa bago. And then we use that conventional drying or harmonized natin, natutunan natin, yung continuous sun drying. And we use the all weather or UV plastic dryer. Then we have the, we monitor also the beans and the ambient temperature for the purpose of recording observation like that. And the drying up to 7 to 8 moisture content. That is the conventional. For the optimized protocol for fermentation, we did the same thing, the UF18, 75% pad maturity, without seasoning. Then, no draining also. And again, the same, everything here, uh, except for this thick lawaan here. This is the, 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 
the back is 1.5 side and 2 inches below. Then we have 50 kilograms, the same. 2D and aerobic, the same. 3D aerobic, the same. Temperature, the same. Different is the alternative drying. We use the intermittent drying, not continuous sun drying. There's a bin and ambient temperature monitoring every 20 or 30 minutes. Then the bin temperature should not exceed 30 to 35 degrees. But sometimes it goes beyond that, so at least less than 40 degrees. Then bin turning to allow evaporative cooling. Ibig sabihin, ito turn yung mga beans para ma-expose yung other beans then for evaporative cooling. Okay. So early morning to early noon drying only. Then we pile and cover the beans before noon to escape from sun drying. Then we repeat the process until 7 to 8 moisture content. Okay, this is now what we have we did. This is the conventional, this is the new. This is the uh, box here, one inch. This is 1.5 to 2 inches. Same variety, same maturity. Then here is now we have the experimental setup. In other words, we put in here also the data log. This is automated so that we can monitor the temperature without any intervention. And we did also manual uh, uh, monitoring of temperature. Then this is the fermentation. We have given fermentation for both. Then uh, at day two, we transferred that one. So this is now the, we did the bean cut test. Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Then the drying. So this is the conventional, just like many other uh, processors do, do they, they by continuous sun drying and using the all weather plastic or UV plastic. Then we have here, we exposed to the sun, but uh, uh, monitored, uh, as mentioned a while ago, the temperature, the temperature ng, ng labas at ang temperature ng beans. At saka ito na na, yung mixing para lang yung ma-expose ibang beans. Tapos, again, i-monitor naman every 20 minutes, the same cycle like that. Okay. So here are the results. Ito yung sa sa manual monitoring ng bean temperature. Napapansin nyo, itong new method natin is that around 1 to 1.5 degrees difference ang panila. Ibig sabihin, mas mainit doon sa pan. Of course, dahil sa kwan, sa makapal yung yung wood, makapal yung wood na ginamit. Okay. Yung insulation noong heat ay na preserve. Okay. Then even sa data lag, yung kwan siya, uh, meron sa under computer, daily hanggang kwan siya, till we get a higher temperature in the, what you call it, in the new technology or in, the, in that uh, that we have compared with the conventional. Then, in the ambient, uh, the, kwan, the intermittent drying. This is the, uh, during intermittent drying. So, uh, this, you can see in here na the ambient, yung blue, yung temperature ng environment at saka temperature ng beans. Ito yung sa intermittent drying na titinitingnan na ang, ang bean temperature should not exceed doon sa ambient temperature. Ayan siya. Kaya monitor pag paan siya, pag mga ilang 1 or 1 degree na lang difference siya o ilipat na siya, i Ikuha na siya, i-mix na naman, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. And you can notice here, uh, I can notice here na, uh, ayan, uh, even day 5, pero sa day, up day 5, very critical siya. Day 5, medyo nag-abot-abot na siya. Pero this is also, we notice here, this is a critical day of, uh, uh, the critical days doon sa intermittent drying. Then, napansin nyo, itong, itong, ah, sorry, napansin nyo itong sa, continuous sun drying sa day 4 na lang day 4 pa lang dry na tapos napansin nyo na overpower ang bean temperature doon sa ambient temperature sa second day pa lang okay may implication to mamaya okay then ito lalo na sa day 3 lumagpas lalo yung sa temperature okay at ito yung moisture content napansin nyo mas mahaba ang time ng drying, ng intermittent compared with the conventional. Day 4 pa lang, dry na yung ating process and drying. Allow. Okay. Ito na yung result.
this is the first try and we did the second try you know the I'll be sharing the first try then we get I'll show to you the show to you the tawag ito yung 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 mean average then you notice in here for the pH between conventional and new approach in here and conventional is acidic compared with this one is near neutral or slightly acidic itong sa new okay then ano nangyari so ang intermittent drying allows evaporative cooling so ano evaporative cooling in which the doon sa gradua during evaporative cooling abang nagche-change kayo ng kuan doon yung temperature pa yung difference ng ambient temperature at sa kasabing temperature bibabag pang abot imi-mix mo na siya bakit magko-cool down ang temperature ng beans and and tawag nito it allows the beans cells to open allowing the release of acetic acid ibig sabihin during the process of intermittent hindi continuous dry and continuous drying allow itself to cool down yun yung time na i-release ang all cells will open open and release acetic acid itong unmonitored and very high bean temperature would cause closure of the bean cells trapping the acetic acid ibig sabihin sobra kataas yung temperature sa bean na kuan kaya nagsasarado siya kaya natatarap yung acetic acid kaya napansin niyo maasim yung conventional dahil natatrap na yung acetic acid doon and when napan napansin namin habang nagda-dry once natrap na siya hindi na siya makalabas kasi kahit mag-intermittent it will return pa kami ng ganong process pa rin pero nasarado na siya sa kataas ng temperature ay kuwan talaga natrap na siya kaya ang result sa aming kuwan acidic pa rin so very medyo kuwan siya uh, tawag nito at uh, uh, intricate na trabaho pero ang resulta maganda yan siya then ito ngayon we go deeper now to the titratable acidity ang diba sabi ko kanina may dalawang klasing acid doon yung lactic acid at saka acetic acid kuno pare natin yung conventional at saka yung protocol natin dito is that napapansin niyo mataas ang acid ng yung sa lactic as a te, at saka sa sa sorry lactic bakit nagbura-bura to anyway one merong mataas ang value nitong sa lactic acid acetic acid doon sa conventional mas lower ang titrable acidity ng dito sa intermittent again this is a reflection doon sa pH na nakita natin dito so, kung ihihimay-himay natin may pagkakaiba sa ang dalawang procedure doon sa pag one sa, sa acidity both the lactic acid and the acetic acid okay sa so average kung baga pin combined replications ito na ngayon so in other words itong new protocol 6.4 mataas pa rin yung acidity uh, mataas yung pH ibig sabihin hindi siya acidic na kwan siya ito yung mga ideal na mga sa mga chocolate na they like the pH like that and then Itong si conventional, acidic talaga siya. 5.2. Ganun. And then, ganun din sa acidic acid. Ganun siya. So, uh, mas mataas pa rin yung conventional, both the acidic and lactic acid compared with the, with the, ayong sa new technology. Okay. Here comes now the alkyl pyrazines. Ano tong alkyl pyrazines? Alkyl pyrazines are compounds na related or associated sa flavor, taste, and aroma. Actually, there are five types of pyrazines. And detected doon sa kwan is about four. Hindi lang makuha yung number four. But here, mapansin ninyo ang conventional versus yung sa new technology. Mas mataas ang yung alkyl pyrazine by almost 40% doon sa compared sa conventional protocol which means mas masarap, mas mabango, mas malinamnam. Ganun siya. And these are precursors doon, especially doon sa pag roasting roasting na. Okay. Okay. In other words, here's now the how do we do this cacao bean fermentation based on those based on those studies. So, 
the good quality beans and green products are governed by different factors, hindi lamang fermentation. Una, of course, yung variety ng cacao. Katulad ng iba, pag your US-18 mo gamitin mo, mapait-pait, mga ganun. Pag mixture, isa, medyo si W10, medyo sarap-sarap, ganun ba? So, iba, mixture para masarap. O, oh, then, sa mga variety din. Of course, si Creole, yung mas masarap kung sa sanitaryo at mas marap doon sa doon sa forastero. Ganun. Then, fermentation. Naging ang good quality, napansin nyo kanina about this, uh, the fermentation process that and as well as the yung pinakita kanina as well as the drying may difference siya yun siya dry also drying intermittent drying versus continuous sun drying and also the processing ng beans yung like roasting for chocolate processes okay so fermentation is also affected by of course variety and fermentation back Of course, may raming tatanong. Anong klaseng box maganda? Of course, kwa naman siya. Okay. Uh, iba naman, as suggested by those experience already, the fruit-based na mga woods are better than the, yung sa mga steel at saka yung basket. Kasi ang purpose kasi is that, kwan, yung pagbakapal siya, ang insulation, ang aspect doon, yung heat insulation, ang important. Kasi tulad sa tao din, kinakailan ng init para makagalaw. Ganun ba? Kung ilagay ka sa malamig, ay talagang manginginig. Mm. Okay. Then we have the temperature monitoring. This is essential. Bakit essential ang temperature? Because you will be able to learn in here if your fermentation is working or not. Ganun siya. Nag-increase ba? Kasi yung heat naman is product din ng process. Okay. Then we have the turnings. Itong anaerobic to aerobic. Yan siya. Kaya mahalaga talaga yung fermentation kasi yung iba nagu hinuhugasan pa tapos ibilad na ibenta na okay now anong ginagamit so this is the fermentation box uh, given to us by Steve uh, for the different uh, kilograms uh, we have the 50 kg the 4 by 42 by 42 by 42 450 you have 60 by 60 and 300 about 80 by 80 by centimeter and uh, Thickness around 1 to 2 inches both sides and 2 inches below bottom for better insulation. At saka may mga butas interval dyan. Okay. Then, we have we have jute sack and banana leaves. And, uh, okay, for the cacao pod selection and breaking, we need to have this, ideally, this 75%. Kasi, bakit? Ayan pagkakaiba ng sa loob ng stages. Ito yung immature. Immature, sinama mo. Kaya mamaya, makita mo yung tinatawag na slaty, slaty. Ito yung mga immature. Sinama doon. Pag permanent na, ay mukhang abu. Ganun. And then, ito naman yung si ideal. 75%. Bakit? Nakit, napansin nyo, basa-basa di dyan, diba? Wet siya, ganyan. Ang dami sugars dyan. Bakit? Pag basa-basa dyan, paborito yan ng mga mikrobyo para mag-ferment. Okay. Ito naman si 50. Ito naman si 100. Si 100, nag-dry na siya. Iba, nag-germinate pa nga. Ganun siya. So, ito naman yung overripe. Wala nang basa, wala nang tamis, etc. Si 50 naman, pwede na rin kami sugar siya. Anyway, pwede naman ito sila. Basta may mili ka lang na magandang, magandang mga beans. Huwag lang yung mga, mga germinated, o may, may, may insekto, may mga peste. Kasi may sugar din naman sa 25 dyan. Mahalo na rin yung sugar dyan. Okay. But ideally, itong 75% kasi yan na dyan sugar. Next, mag-pad breaking. Then, day one, lagay ka na ngayon ng mga kuhan mo dyan after na na-select mo na yung kuha, nung mga beans, magandang beans, then anaerobic fermentation. Ayan ang temperature. Then, day two, ayan siya. Nagkuha na siya. Yung sinabi ko kanina na transition noong anaerobic to aerobic. Tapos ito yung cut test niya. Ayan pa siya. Press ko pa. And then, itong sa day 3, nilipat mo na ngayon siya sa kuan doon sa new box to allow aerobic fermentation. Yung mga acetic acid bacteria mag magkuhan doon. Mag obra kaya iyan siya. Ito yung bean cut test. Then, day 4, bilipat na naman siya. Again, sa paglipat siya, first out, first in. Pero i-allow nyo 
then mix there para allow exposure sa oxygen for the anaerobic bacteria uh, for the aerobic aerobic bacteria to have oxygen para makaarte siya makagalaw siya then another day again ilipat na naman siya turning that's the turning ito yung bean cut test then uh, next is the bean drying okay uh, ang bean drying is affected by other fact another factors na sinasabi ko kanina intermittent drying next is temperature monitoring in ambient and bean temperature as well as moisture content. Okay. Then, ito yung bean drying, intermittent drying. Ito yung minomonitor siya ng itong uh, hygrometer here. Ayan siya. Kung wala mang ganitong klase, maghanap sa Shopee, meron doon. Pero huwag kayong bumili ng mga pipitsugin na temperature ginagamit sa mall na kahit may lagnat ka pa, 23 degrees ka pa rin. Ganun. Kung siya, ito yung may laser siya. Ayan, then, and dry siya. And then, okay. Then, ito yung mga uh, steps dito na naminsure ko na kanina. In the continuous sun drying, but intermittent. Tapos, uh, ibig sabihin, hindi idare-direcho, kundi may pahinga-pahinga siya sa kwan. Then, monitoring between 10 to 30 minutes. Not to exceed 35 degrees, pero hindi mo man talaga mapigilan dyan natin. So, at least, dito sa 40 degrees below, Okay pa rin naman ang results. Then, bin turning to allow evaporative cooling. It's a turn, turn siya para ma-expose yung iba. At saan mag-cool down yung iba. Then, early morning to early noon drying. Pero bantayan nyo kasi paminsan, lalo pag tag-init, naku, ang bilis talaga mag-kuan. That's why, pag init masyado, kuan. Bantayan ang temperature monitoring. Pero medyo pa, cloudy-cloudy lang. Medyo okay-okay pa. Ganun. Then, kung tapos na before noon, para mainit na kastanghali, ikuha na siya, piling na siya, or covering the beans, uh, then repeating of process until 7 to 8% moisture content. Okay. Then, ito yung medyo may important notes lang. So, do the drying early morning up to early siya. Then, drying the at noon, drying at noon to up, is not advisable since the temperature rises rapidly. When the, it rises over 35 degrees, ang bilis talaga. Then, Monitor the bean temperature not to exceed 35 degrees or less than 40 degrees. Then do the turning when beans reach 34 or less than 40 degrees. Yan siya. So when the bean temperature continues to rise up 34, tuloy-tuloy na siya, wala na pagkakaiba sa ambient temperature, stop the drying and pile the beans. Then we, ob then we observe that once the bean cells are closed due to high temperature, more than ganyan na siya, they remain closed, making the fermented beans acidic. And the first four days are very critical. Thus, strictly monitor the bean temperature. Next, extra care and monitoring of beans temperature in drying. Ito, this is very important kasi marami ting gumamit dito. Of course, may mga tanong to mamaya. And uh, paano pag sa solar dryer? Kasi nandiyan lalo pag high bulbyo. Okay man ang uh, solar dryer, basta buksan lang ang mga yung sa gilid-gilid na iyan to allow air flow, etc. Kung bisaya, hindi mabuot. Kung sa Tagalog, hindi mabuit. I don't know. Hindi ma... Kuhan, ma-inclose siya para... Pag ma-inclose yan siya, masyad, ang bilis mag... Kung temperature na... Ang kuhan, ang maapiktuhan yung intermittent drying. So in other words, i-open yung mga windows dyan, etc. Then allow to... Kuhan, but very close temperature monitoring. Okay. Pag drying naman, instead na... I-dry na ganoon. Ang buong solar drive, takpan nyo na ng yung, ah, ito, yung, oh. ano tawag yan, pang cover na, yung plastic cover, ano yung plastic cover? Yung, yung may orange at saka blue, ganoon. Huwag gumamit ng black kasi nag-absorb ng heat. Yung orange na blue, itakip, ibabaw doon, tapos, ang iba pa nga, nilagyan para ng ibabaw doon para lang walang direct kung sa araw, para lang mamonitor yung temperature. So may mga innovations diyan. Bantayan niyo lang kasi malaman niyo man lang pag meron kayong temperature monitoring. Ayun siya. Then storage. So we got the storage. Dark factor factor affect storage. One is the ventilation ng inyong mga 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 materials. Yung materials ginagamit niyo, o plastic ba or jute sack ba? Next sa location. One ba? Sa location. Mm, 
hindi ba dinadaga, hindi ba karon So, then, uh, monitoring pest and diseases, yung mga bantay, kung may pest and diseases, moisture content then And naalala ko pala, during fermentation, nakalimutan ko pagsabi, as much as possible, huwag kayong mag-ferment doon sa may maraming usok kasi ina-absorb ng beans yan. Yung sa rabi run, na nag-rabi ka baho, na ganun. At so other kinds of foul smell, ikuan nyo, as much as possible, ikuan nyo kasi ina-absorb siya sa beans during fermentation. Okay, go back to storage. Uh, yung moisture content. In other words, ganyan siya, itong way of kuan. May mga other, other kuan na rin siya, yung food grade na mga uh, tawag nito, yung uh, materials. Then, let's go to the grade, bean grading. Okay. For you, para makita ninyo, sa Google, hanapin nyo PNS or Filipino Standard for Cacao Beans. Makakita kayo doon ng file para mag-study kayo ano yung mga standard doon. Ipakita ko lang ang sample. Doon, ginigrade yung ating mga beans, especially doon sa mga buyers, mga meticulous, mga meticulous, mga meticulous na mga buyers kasi doon magpipresyo sila. Paano nila ginigrade ito? At certain 100 grams, may 100 grams, bilangin dyan ngayon ilan yung 100 grams, itingnan kung ano yung ilan yung moldy, moldy, moldy yung parang inaamad, slaty, muroog, muroog, ay parang yung uh, abo, na ganun. Tapos, insect damage or germinated. Tapos, yan, binibilang niya ng total dyan, percentage siya sa total, ilan siya, total the number of seeds, kung makaabot ng 3%, mga 9%, ayan siya ang grade niya. Ganun ito naman sa kuan, sa class B, mga class B. Uh, ilan siya? Mga 14, mga 18%, uh, class B na siya. Okay. In other words, uh, I'll be sharing to you, ano yung mga pag sa grading dito? Okay. Ito yung mga common defects ng cacao beans. Itong clustered, yung nagdikit-dikit dyan, na hindi masyado na mix ng mga beans, dikit-dikit dyan. Clustered or clump beans. Another is broken or cut beans. Yan. Ito yung defects. Another is germinated. Yung nag-germinate dyan. Another, yung insect or infested beans. Yung mga butas-butas dyan. Binubukbo or kaan. And then, ito yung moldy sinasabi dito. Maraming mold. Ito naman ay yung flaky. Murag panas siya, yung abo. Ito mga flat beans. Ayan siya. Tinitingnan niyan, these are the defect. In other words, doon sa national standard, tinitingnan nila yung ano yung mga defects doon. Okay. Doon, ay ito naman, eh, tinatawag na uh, yung cut test through the gelatin. Itong gelatin ay is another test ng quality ng beans na fermented beans. Kaya kung makita mo dito, ayan, iba-ibang klaseng beans nandyan. Properly fermented beans, may yung over, over fermented, may yung partially fermented, o lalo na dito sa akuan. Ayan siya, ayan mga partially fermented, ayan siya. So, ibig sa, iba-ibang klase. Makita na yun din ang mga slaty, kung may slice yan siya. Ibig sabihin, there are uh, processors or buyers, tinag-test nila yung samples nyo. And then, uh, tawag nito, doon makita yung tinatawag na fissuring. Pag proper, magandang fissured niya, maganda ang fermentation niya compare nitong hindi wala ay yung mga yung fissured sa Bisaya o sa Tagalog, yung mga parang biyak-biyak dyan, ganun. Mas kaya mga biyak-biyak, okay, maganda siya. Maganda pagka, pan. kaya tinitingnan rin nila dyan. Okay, anong point dito? Kapag, ah, ito pa rin siya. Cut test, tulad siya nasabi, over-fermented, mga well-fermented, mga white na well-fermented, yung mga slaty, yan siya, tapos violet, etc. Ang iba pang mga different kinds of parameters para itest mo yung quality ng inyong fermented beans. Ano bang, pagkaka ano bang impact nito? Kaya bago kayo magbenta ng inyong mga beans, kayo mismo, ang ginawa ng iba para mahal ang presyo ng inyong pag pagbenta, ay tinatanggal na yung mga defective beans. Ang iba, kinasala-sala nila, parang maiwan doon, yung mga broken, mahulog na, yung malaking butas, para mahulog ng iba, tapos next layer, yung ganyan. Iba, mano-mano, iba, mechanized. Ang purpose lang talaga, ang maiwan yung magaganda. Para at least, ang man, manual na lang yung para sa iba. Bakit? May implication to. Doon sa marketing. Ngayon, pag maganda, pag tingin na lang, pag hindi ka sila, pag wow, ganda na. Ah, high price ka na. Okay. 
Next one, uh, mapili na din yung mga good quality beans para doon sa processing like chocolate, tablea, etc. Next, yun na ito. Ito na yung isa sa impact doon sa processing or product development. Kasi uh, at least papaano, tanggal na yung mga defective na iyon ay kwan, madali na lang mag minimal na lang pagsiselect para at least maganda yung quality ng iyong beans. Okay. Next, a competition. Having known, last year, ang daming na-reject na nag at sumali doon sa PCQA, dami talagang na-reject dahil, una, siguro, di alam yung mga procedures sa pag- uh, Number two, yung sinasubmit nila mga beans, sa itsura pa lang, rejectable na. Tapos sa packaging, etc. So, ibig sabihin, kung alam mo makuha ng bean grading, at least bago ka mag-submit, piliin mo na yung mga manood you have the chance to be included sa competition. I know for sure, itong ginagamit, the one I'm telling you now, is actually, I mean, mag, pakuntisa na talaga kayo, sino masarap dito ngayon. Ganun, having known this technology, of course, meron namang, mag-level up din naman yung PCI, COP, CQA, kapag kuan, sa so pag-select din. Then, anong implications and applications of what I'm telling you? High quality fermented, dried, and graded cacao beans will lead to high quality chocolates, high quality tablea, high quality cocoa products, high demand, high bean prices, high profit and income. In other words, we have only challenges this time. I'll just go somewhere in detail in here. Yung iba, iba ibang response. Aanhin man namin yung procedure na yan. Bilibinta lang namin sa insect. Ang demand nila ganyan, kumbaga, market-driven fermentation daw. Tapi iba naman, ah, basta, all-in man sila. Basta, makabinta lang. Okay. Kung ganun ang attitude nyo, huwag na kayo magpalo. Kasi, yun namang attitude nyo. Pero ang attitude nyo is to have a quality, have quality beans, then you'll have that your beans will be monitored and uh, what I call this, uh, uh, given a quality control, you will be guided to a buy to buyers or a buyer or processor who will buy higher price. Alang alam ko may mga may processor na sa Pilipinas na gusto ng bumibili ng mga high quality beans. Basta may assurance na properly. Okay, uh, ginagawa ito. And then, uh, tawag nito. Ngayon, kung atin yung iba naman, kasi inchik lang bumibili. Yan na. Well, nasa sa inyong decision yan. Because, Kung attitude nyo ay pipitsugin, pipitsugin din yung inyong processes. Pero ang attitude nyo is to, buy, is to develop quality products doon, ay you can go for this one. Medyo tedious siya, pero mahal naman presyo. Uh, mabuti pa itong, agang kumbaga sa ganito, uh, itong new technology, taas ang quality, mahal ang presyo. Mabuti pang presyo, mahal. Sa akin, wala nagmamahal. Okay. Next. Pero may mga challenges ngayon. Bago akong magbigay challenges, itong quality ng beans is also affected by, by the, is also a function of genotype or variety. Meron po rastero. Si po rastero, high yielding, pero hindi masarap. Pero karamihan sa mga Afrika na country, po rastero talaga yung pinoproduce nila. Then, pero marami na bumibili kasi lagyan na naman ng gatas at asukal. Ganun. But actually, we have advantage also here because we are planting trinitario. Karamihan sa analysis ng Trinitario dito sa Kuwagilas, Pilipinas, around 40 to 60% are, have Criollo genotype, which means masarap-sarap, may high yield pa. Ganun. But here comes Criollo. Criollo, based doon sa analysis ng alkyl pyrazine, mataas talaga siya compared with the Trinitario. Parang 50%, 40 to 50% different din sila. Big means mataas ang Criollo. Kaya masarap, kaya pala saya masarap because of that one. Of course, other compounds din. In other words, sa doon sa nag-differ siya ng alkyl pyrazine na sinabi ko nina. So in other words, in the Philippines, meron tayong trinitario at I would like to share to you nandito sa Pilipinas ang Criollo. I would like to take this opportunity kung may Criollo kayo, huwag niyong ibenta sa ibang country kasi maraming gustong bumili ng Criollo dalhin sa Latin America. Kasi ang Latin America, the Americas, and are looking for the true Criollo, they cannot find already. Even sa mga genome na sinasubmit dyan sa database, eh, hindi ba sure kung totoo ba yung Criollo. Then we did analysis dito based on SR markers 
and we have uh, classified the materials over 200 uh, na, over 200 plus uh, yung analyze namin and it's clustered into forastero terranateri and criollo and we have 100% here nearly 100% na terranateri out i mean criollo pero hindi natin itsipwera itong mga nandito kasi karamihan kasi nagsabi na bakit po sinabing criollo yan sabi niya kasi maputi kasi ang beans niya kasi eh, nabi ko palagi eh, kasi minar hindi lang hindi lahat na puti ay Amerikano or European may puti ding Pinoy it and also it takes only one gene to try to change the color of the bean in other words it takes 350 years there are 350 years ago the the Spanish came to Philippines and introduced this Criollo in Batangas na and then hanggang na disperse sa different countries and it takes 350 years itong cluster dito nagkaiba-iba na sila ibig sabihin aanhin mo yang 100% na criollo kasi 100% criollo ay masakitin mababa ang yield masarap nga lang nandito tayo yung sa stage ngayon that we need to study other criollo types baka during natural selection natural hybridization nagkaroon na ng interchange dito ng genes or genome Kaya tawag nito, baka makahanap tayo dito na masarap na tawag nito, masarap na mm, may matas yield pa at saka may resistance pa sa pest. Yun ang next study namin dito sa next project namin sa, sa USM. In other words, ang point ko dito is that if you have some criollos, uh, uh, kahit nakalagay dito kayo ni Bilong, ay hindi pwedeng itapon kasi tawag nito, we are now working with National Seed Industry Council para ma-preserve, ma-register itong triolyo natin. Bakit? The Philippines is geographically isolated. Nas island tayo. Kaya mataga, malayo, ay big sabihin, hindi ka agad magkuhan. Maka-transfer, transfer man between provinces, yun na dyan pa rin siya. Pero mahirap mag maghanap ng tutuong 100%, pero may nakita din kami, hindi ko lang sabi, secret. So, kasi para walang gulo, kasi ang dami, nagkagulo na yung mga triolyo yan, nagbibenta ng mga no. tagi, hindi naman sure kung Really, but, hindi. So, ganun. but anyway, nakakatulong na rin yan kahit paano. Kaya ito yung advantage ng Philippines ngayon. We need to, we need to uh, what it calls, preserve our Creolios here. We need to reproduce. At saka, we need to, tawag nito yung, um, ibig sabihin, huwag nyo ipirate, ipapirate sa ibang kuan. Kasi yan nangyari sa ating ilang-ilang na yan. Ilang-ilang ba yun? Yung perfume na kuan? Ibang country na niregister nila. We need pagaling sa Pilipinas yun. Okay. Magiging nationalistic tayo para sa kapanakanan ninyong mga taga nag nagkakao. Okay. Kayo ang makikinabang dito, kayo ang nagkakao. Ako lang ang nag-research. Wala akong kakawan. Oo. So, ayan siya. In other words, uh, quality is also function ng variety. Okay. Meron kami na-create dito na uh, tawag to leaflet para mag-guide. And we can just, kung ano may ask kay, will upload doon kay ma'am doon sa PCIC ka sa Secretariat para may kopya din kayo. And then again, may, although nakalagay dito 35 degrees, pero you can also pan with 35 to 40 degrees. Kasi anyway, ang 40 degrees, ang result na naman within the range pa naman ng yung acceptable doon sa pH. Then, uh, this is the one. However, there are some challenges. Tulad siya nabi ko na kanina, this technology become useless kung walang proper systems ang cacao industry. That's why we are talking with the PCIC, PCIA, this is a challenge of PCIC, PCIA, the Philippine Rural Development, the RDP, the Department of Agriculture, DTI. Because even though we lecture on this and there are no proper uh, mentoring, monitoring, and supporting systems, creating functional systems for cacao bean consolidation, especially doon sa mga, doon sa mga, mga associations, cooperatives. Yung mga farmers dyan na walang cooperative, mag-join na kayo para at least mag-consolidate yung mga, mga beans nyo. May mga tapos supportahan naman kayo ng, ng gobyerno doon sa doon sa PhilMEC, bigyan ng mga facilities, blah, blah, blah. So, so that ang for service processing ay ma-mentor, ma ma-monitor, at saka ma-monitor ma siya. And then, pati sa marketing system. Kasi maraming mag-prostrate din na farmer kasi Mag-produce man sila, binibili lang ng 90 pesos, 100 pesos. Ito naman, mag 
dagdagan pa itong quality itong testing itong way ngayon na talagang pahirapan tapos binta lang na pipitsugin parang ma-discourage niya in other words the challenge now is for the government and the private uh, entities to rework hand in hand para at least ma masuportahan ang cacao farmers para ang mga individual farmers mag-join ng association or cooperative para masuportahan cooperative na tarong ha yung hindi hindi yung kuot pera tips na yan yung matitino na cooperative developmental progressive yung ganun hindi yung tuan yung anomalous na cooperative or associations para at least ma-monitor sila up upscale sila and then yun in other words if i were to see this one if i were in industry ito yung mag-increase ng production by production if process properly tapos properly then meron ng one meron ng quality beans ang meron na ring processors potential potential buyers both in the local uh, regional provincial national level kasi actually we have 10,000 metric tons deficit sa Pilipinas ng demand 50,000 ang metric ang need 10,000 lang masupply na 40 pa na supply I think it's a good way, especially it, for those processors who like to have quality beans. In other words, that this will be, there should be a will for the for the government as well as the the agencies to really support the system. Para at least itong ang scenario na makita natin dito is that will be one of the top quality producers in the world, ng quality beans. And aside from going to the world. Unahin mo natin sa Pilipinas. Ibig sabihin, may, may na, doon sa mga trainees namin doon sa Kwandon, maraming potential at saka nag-ikot-ikot din ako at least marunong ang kumain ng chocolate kasi ng alcohol chocolate pare-pareho lang lasa. Habang, duma, habang kumakain ng maraming chocolate, doon ko na natikman anong masarap o hindi. Ibig sabihin, may mga may mga chocolate sa Pilipinas na may international standard that they, that they can compete na mga, yung mga yung galing sa mga Sweden, sa mga Finland, kung saan pa yung mga European na mga chocolate. It's a matter of really something refining pa lang para. Refining para at least pati yung sa, sa, sa pagbabalot at pag, pag uh, what do you call it? Uh, mga what's it? Uh, pag 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 process, pag yung sa commercialization na, itsura, itsura kasi sa itsura na, na it affects also sa itsura sa pag, package, packaging, you know. And then uh, it's a challenge, talaga. And, and ito. And here are some updates. I would like to see updates also. So I would like to uh, inform the everyone that USM is actively doing R and D's now. And uh, although there are existing facilities na richa, but we we do not stop uh, creating, innovating. So now we are having in our nicer project like automated temperature monitoring and data log to the fermentation box na kuan para di ka na magmanumano diyan then another automated temperature monitoring in solar dryer in relation to intermittent drying actually when i look at the kuan may mga publications na about intermittent drying especially doon sa paggawa ng dryer so this could kung mag-search kayo sa kuan may mga topics na about intermittent drying and uh, especially on sa mechanized mm -hmm. and uh, however itong tinuturo ni Steve is more of talagang specific and uh, it's on now that we have researched it, it's supported by science in the in the Marcus based technology. And also I would like to announce to you that uh during the firm during the fermentation, sorry. During the fermentation, we observe that during fermentation, we just put the beans and allow the fermentation to occur. Then we found out based in the literature that <clears throat> adjunct inoculation is also good because may mga good bacteria may mga bacteria may mga good mga yeast in this new project that has been approved last week the picard will be isolating functional microbes ito yung mga microbes mga yeast bacteria isama doon sa fermentation para may available na na inoculum para hindi na magantay-antay build build at nandiyan na sila kasi research research uh, show that it, it enhances the fertilization. It also improves the, the fermented product. And also, we have also another uh, proposed project, another mechanized mechanization. Uh -oh. And for that, I say thank you very much. Thank you.
<clears throat> yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Edward uh, Barlaan, for uh, your presentation. So I think uh, Dr. Barlaan right now is now ready to uh, accept questions no? uh, regarding the presentations. I understand you have a number of questions from uh, our own uh, Zoom chat box. And uh, there are also questions from uh, our audience from uh, Facebook. No? So may we start first with, uh, first we would like to thank uh, Dr. Edward Bailan for sharing that uh, very nice presentation and many, many participants they understand are very uh, excited about uh, the new learnings that they have, no? the, the comparisons between the old way and the new way of uh, uh, doing things with regards to cacao fermentation, drying and, and, and print grading technology. And for the information of everyone, we are still 423 from the highest earlier of uh, 445. No? So many, many are interested on the presentation of Dr. Edward Bailaad. So we have a question here, the best temperature uh, measuring device. No, They're asking on the best temperature measuring device, which may be cheap and cheerful pricing. No? Na magagamit nila in the respective farms when they do small scale, small scale uh, fermentation. Ah, okay. Ah, for the fermentation, may tinatawag na lulipap na kwan lulipap na temperature. Hindi yung pangkilikili, iba yung pangkilikili. <laughs> Yun yung parang na radian na magdetermine ng kwan. Yun siya. Ah, uh, hindi daman siya ganong kamahalan siya. Oh, thousand lang din. Oh. May pangalan ba tayo dyan, sir? Wala. Ang tawag na lollipop temperature. <laughs> lollipop na. Hindi mukhang lollipop. Oh, pero saan ba yung magbibili? Magbibili ah, sa mga ah, of the, pharmacy? Sa Shopee. Or... Sa Shopee. Ah, okay. uh, Shopee. Online. Shopee, Shopee oh. siya. Pati yung sa temperature para sa intermittent drying, may tawag doon na hygrometer na laser. Laser, kung yung gun. Gun temperature, uh, laser gun na Thermometer. Ah, industrial. Yon, industrial laser gun. Uh, ah, okay. Industrial laser gun. No? Magbibili yan sa Shopee. Okay. Uh, we have another question here. What are the challenges faced during the drying process no, of the cacao beans? And how can this be mitigated? The drying process. Okay. Ito ba yung usual na problema sa drying process? Una, just like dito sa region 11 and 12 na uh, Ang kwan, di na alam anong, ang ating temperature ngayon. Weather, wet, wet, uh -huh. wet, wet. Ayan. Isa wet, talaga uh, sa mga wet, challenges dry. yan ngayon kasi uh, tawag nito, we cannot wait for the sun because the sun is beyond the rain, beyond the kwan doon siya. Which means, itong address ngayon ay yung uh, uh, mechanized fryer. Pero it needs to be researched kasi ah, uh, Challenging siya dahil Gago na tambo ko mo yun Binubuka Dora magaling nagka pa Mateo Can we request the security Please mute Traitor daw Pag-unmute Sa dami, 400 kasi no 400 tayo Hindi mo nakikita Go ahead sir Go ahead sir Sige Sige Ayan, so a challenging italaga that is a rain, rain, rain. So one one challenge in our NB is that to really develop that mechanized dryer, kasi ang depende sa energy saan siya kukuha. Galing ba? Pag sa gas naman, may ngamoy naman. Kung kwan sa man, electricity, high kwan naman siya. Input. In other words, all the mga, mga interventions dyan kasi kung mga usok, may asok din sa amoy. Ganun ba? So, Isa sa sa challenges talaga na kung ano siya, yung, I don't know kung may consult ang kung andito yung sa Filmec, if they have developed this dryer mm -hmm. para doon sa at least itong sa ulan-ulan na yan. Anong alternative? Kasi we cannot depend really on the sun on that matter. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there should be a drying procedure that is that needs to be researched kung anong effect nito sa quality. Kasi ang temperature, although isa sa mga intervention automated, yung automated na may ginagawa ng USM ngayon, automation ng temperature, like sa, sa drying na solar dryer. Pag maka-reach niya ng 40 degrees, malagpas siya, 
automatic siya mag-open yung mga window niya para i-release mm -hmm. ng kuan. Tapos bababa naman siya ganun. Automated siya na temperature sensitive. Pero sa dryer kasi, there has, a, there has to be research up to what one. Actually, may mga publications on um, mechanical dryer using the intermittent principle, drying principle. Mm -hmm. I think that's one challenge in the Philippines. Okay, uh, we have here a question from uh, Sir Chris Santos. No? Uh, I think you can see that also on your chat box. Does great requirements be the national DTI PNS acidity level? Is there a great requirement or something for uh, the DTI PNS acidity level? Actually, uh, if one, uh, I suggest you open that one Google and study thoroughly. Actually, they need 100 grams for or analysis actually very loose yung kanilang kuansya compared with PCI uh, PCQA na ganon, compared with international ko yun lang siya sa Philippines sa Philippine standard siya medyo loose lang siya pero 100 grams ang tinitcheck niya sa sample for analysis doon sa sa mga different defects na pinakita ko kanina tapos I, I, yeah uh, go ahead go ahead tapos meron niya merong process yata to 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 who we that to may karoon ng uh ang tawag doon mag-certify mag-certify diyan i think the I think the DTI knows more ganun oh okay so i i think i have also shared in chat box yung PNS ng cacao no i think uh, you could download that i shared that earlier another question from uh, sir Pri Santos no? the price difference between conventional and modified system so is there an average peso difference on uh, per kilogram on the traditional conventional drying uh, method and your modified system. Okay. Have you made a uh, research uh, on that? Is, yeah, since this is, uh, we started this last year and uh, I think it's the role now of PCIA, PC, CQA, especially the, this is what we have discussed, that uh, we will identify those who are willing cooperatives and associations to be mentored, monitored in the production, as well as in the processing post harvest using this technology. And we'll put quality assurance on this para doing the physical chemical analysis so that the processors will buy this quality. They're assured of the quality beans. In terms of pricing, I know for sure, but we have to distinguish. One is because even without intermittent drying, ang presyo sa existing market, pag alam nila ng kuan, presyo, may mga buyers ng 200-300 pesos per kilo yung pag alam nila na maganda yung beans, wala pa yung intermittent ha? compared yung mga old ins na iyan ganun siya but for the intermittent, wala pang study about it but I think opportunity for us to have that study because the the buyers or the process have, we have the quality assurance uh, to be issued by PCI or some uh, committees you know. okay, thank you uh, there's a question here from Eric uh, Dakinag. Now, how to verify or know the variety of cacao? Should I send samples to BPI Provincial Office or is there a simple way of uh, determining the varieties of cacao in the field? Okay. Uh, one, one classic way is to know the variety by its appearance. Okay. May mga publications or mga tawag nito, mga Leafless or brochures, even sa online, yung sa pads palang itsura ng mm -hmm. mga BR25, UF18, W10, PBC123. These are the common high yielding varieties na ginamit lately. And ma distinguished masya appearance. Molado, especially pag mag mature na siya. Ayan siya. Then, ngayon, itong, itong ginagawa ng DA. PCA, at kung ano pa, nag-distribute na sila kung ano-ano dyan para maka-distribute lang ng cacao, hindi nila alam yung kung anong variety na yan. But basically, ang dinidistribute naman nila ay yung mga four varieties. Pero namang, mayroon namang scrupulous na distributor, bakit maka-distribute lang para maka-distribute, yun na di alam. Okay. Another way is yung molecular analysis. Dito sa USM, uh, although the project will end in June uh, this year, but we'll have that uh, we have the services to identify ito mga UF18, BR25, etc. Para at least uh, doon sa mga ang ginawa namin, we collaborate with the 
the nurse series in regions 11 and 12, as well as now in other regions already who are now benefiting the services. Para yung mother plans nila ay assured na UF18 or BR25 or mga PBC, etc. And then, uh, the best thing to do is to be assured is buy directly to the re registered or accredited nurseries. Yan siya. Para doon kayo ma at least ma-assure. We'll give you the names of those we are collaborating para at least, if you need that one, doon kayo bibili. Ganun. And also, we help also non-accredited by distributing the mother plants of UF18, BR25, etc. para magkaroon sila ng basis for registration as well as magkaroon sila ng materials na magiging mother plants in the future. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question here from Lucila Hiniston. How to effectively know 75% ripeness na ang cacao pans? Okay. Doon sa picture kanina na... Uh, Okay, pakita ko na lang ha para okay. para, sure. para sigurado. Okay. Ayan. Ayan. So Pakikita ng picture? Ay, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Ayan. Normally Pag pula, mag-turn into parang orange-yellow siya ang process. Pag green, from green going towards yellow. Ayan siya. Pag may itam ito, ito yung immature no. Ito, pag mag-change na siya between pula, may kunting yellow, 50. Ayan siya. Ganyan. Pag ma-incorporate na yung pagka-orange dyan at saka yellow dyan, or 75%. Ang 100% fully, ganyan ang color niya. Kung sa green naman, na kuhan, varieties, ayan siya, green, tapos mag-50, may yellow and green na, tapos mas marami ng yellow ngayon with the green, tapos itong full yellow, 100%. In other words, it needs practice. It needs practice to, to be acquainted with this one. Another way is go to the field, determine the stage, be akin mo yung pad para ma ma, ma acquaint ka para ma relate mo yung coloration doon sa ripeness niya yun sir okay thank you for that uh, we have another question here from rusty kabakungan no? regarding your fermentation box sir uh, uh, could it be possible that they could get a design or still you are still in the process of perfecting it the new your new fermentation boxes now because we understand the old one we have are so big and so uh, huge uh, compared to the one you develop no? as, as a smaller uh, fermentation boxes. Could it be possible that uh, our farmers and the processors can have a design of your fermentation box? Again, ito, what I what I have shown you a while ago, again, I'll show. Uh, I'll show again. Da, 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 da. We are not restricted to small boxes. We just used for demo purposes yung 50 because of the one availability of the of the beans as well as handling. Actually, you can move, you can go for 50 kilograms using this dimension. You can go 150 in this dimension, going to 20 to 300 using this dimension. Then you can do some layering like this, just like what you're doing now. And also, uh, for others, yung 25 kilos, usually we are now experimenting half of this, but so that for 25 kilos. And for other 25 kilos, I don't know if, if it is appropriate for me to say here, but Chris Padriga has, uh, has a technology of handling 25 kilograms. So in other words, for those farmers, small farmers who have only that much volume, they can play around with 25 kilos or 50 kilos using this dimension. And for those mga cooperatives, etc., they can go around like this. Mm. Yan siya. Mm. Okay. Uh, can, can you share with us the difference between the traditional or the old way, uh, the old fermentation boxes uh, compared to your new recommended uh, fermentation box? Huh? Is there a difference or what? Uh, actually, there's not much difference because 
the what is the, the new back is more of thicker thicker siya ng sa size niya either 1 inch or 2 inches but the bottom is 2 inches makapal talaga siya uh -huh. ang the very reason is yung yun nga yung insulation ng heat that's why mag fluctuate kasi ganito, ganito rin uh, people are using like the steel the the plastic ang insulation kasi ang dali maka-escape ng temperature ganun ba so unregulated ang temperature ganun sir uh -huh. okay okay thank you uh, from uh, Joy Tanin no ask ask ko lang if okay lang po kaya gamitin ang dehumidifier for drying kapag hindi po mainit ang araw o hindi uh, makabilad po dehumidifier can we use that for uh, drying uh, what I call this that means uh, I mean it's easy to say yes or no but that has to be researched kasi ang humidifier wala tinatanggal niya yung moisture itataganon siya but I think uh, but even, ang iba nga, kuwan lang. Sa electric pan nga lang, ipa-expose lang kuwan, magdadry din naman siya. Pero in terms of quality effect, I do not know. Ganun. I cannot say yes or no because I have, the has, there should be R&D on that matter. Pwede okay. kung pwede, mag-dry, nag-dry. Ang effect kung quality ba mapikuan, hindi, that needs to be, to be researched. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with regards also to the fermentation ducts, no? Uh, Pwede ba po gamitin ang styrofoam box for small scale fermentation? Ah, yun din. So one of the one or limitations sa styrofoam niya because of the insulation, tawag nito, uh, there are limitations to it. Pwede kung pwede. Pero kaya lang in terms sa uh, heat insulation, <coughs> heat insulation, nakaka-apekto siya compared with yung compacted or mga woods, ganun ba? May effect siya. Okay, so pero pwede for small small batches, uh, pwede ba yan? Ah, Yung for small sir batches, po. Sir Chris? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I-share I, mo, I, ikaw, ikaw na lang, <laughs> ako, o ikaw na lang mag-share. Yeah, I, we're, right now we're using uh, the Orokan uh, ice chest, no? Because uh, it is insulated because it was designed to handle ice na hindi matunaw. But in, the reverse of that is that once we generate the heat inside, it is also kept in the box. Uh, the purpose of the uh, thicker wood, uh, based on the design that was shared to us, is because it will offer better insulation. Whatever heat is generated during microbial activity during the fermentation is kept in because that is part of what we are looking for. We have mm -hmm. to achieve the temperature First and foremost, we have to kill the seeds in the first few days, so that temperature plays a crucial role. Uh, but when it when it comes to the styrofoam uh, box in itself, uh, there is a reaction, I think, with the acid, and it might affect the quality of your beans unless you insulate it. Yeah, uh, you put a layer of uh, food grade plastic, maybe then you can make use of that styro box because it offers the insulation. But uh, the concern is, uh, since we're dealing with acidic uh, uh, mixtures inside, it might react uh, with the styrofoam. Uh, yun lang ang concern, I think. Okay, oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, sir Chris, because the uh, the authority for that one, ay, baka, baka may Baka secret mo yun ba? No, <laughs> no, no. Not... <laughs> Hindi yan secret lang. Hindi <laughs> secret. Share niya yan. Yeah, share, okay. share niya. Okay. So yun yun. Ah. Kasi yun yun. Uh, just, to, uh, just to rejoin their case, sir, sir Chris, actually, that's what we also recommend for those yung mga small time, far, mga small time, mga farmers with low volume produce. Small scale. Because low scale kasi tawag nito yung although Pwede mag-urukan kasi mas mura compared doon sa isang brand no na ma mahal. Anyway, the principle is there. May insulation siya doon tapos bubutasan lang ilalim para mag-drain siya. Ganon. Hmm. But same story pa rin ang mangyangari. Ang, ang, the point is, na-insulate siya. Ang temperature ma-achieve natin at na ganon. Mas, mas effective siya. Thank you, Sir Chris. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. For that no? uh, we have here a question from Nella Beltran. No? 
ang storage po ng beans ay nakaka-apekto ba sa quality ng beans? The storage used uh, ah. the beans can affect the quality of the beans. Ah, yes sir, precisely. Lalo pag kwan ang area ang ang tawag dito, ang area mo ay hindi tawag dito, walang ventilation, ang bilis ng mold na dadami kasi ang moisture na na, na kwan siya tapos ang uh, moisture papasok na naman na ganun so tapos ang mga insekto mga mold etc pag hindi properly ventilated siya pati yung material na ginagamit mo malaking factor sir kaya uh, aanhin mo yung pagferment mo magandangan pero ang storage naman eh, hindi it's part of the game parts of the process na both the fermentation process as well as the storage must go go hand in hand yun siya okay thank you ah uh... Okay, there is a question here about uh, the Criollo variety, no? Uh, uh, where can they where could they buy Criollo cacao seeds, no? Uh, they are from Bicol region. And what is the ideal number of cacao trees planted that can be profitable based on your experience? Okay, first of all, tawag nito. Ah, marami, mag, mag, ano man ako ha, mag, ano man ako. Kasi marami nang thank you sa akin sa akin di ko maisa isa ko kayong mag marispan. Maramat uh, maraming salamat sa nagsabi ng thank you. Thank you rin sa inyong presence and thank you din sa inyong mga questions. Uh, di ko maanser ang lahat yung kasi nag-answer pa ako dito. So again, thank you. Okay, regarding sa uh, Criollo, uh, regarding sa Criollo, ganito. Uh, uh, status ngayon sa Criollo is that may mga tao na mayroong Criollo dito sa Pilipinas na alam ko ay kasama doon sa cluster ng Criollo Group. Kaya lang, I am not authority, I have no authority to divulge them. Kasi, tawag nito, it becomes uh, like commercializing. Na ganun. Pangalawa, yung na-identify na mga trees na nabilong sa cluster should be lagyan ng tag hindi lahat ng nasubmit na mga tao doon na mga trees ay true Criollo. Ibig sabihin, uh, uh, we are at the starting point to to characterize, to identify those true Criollo ones and register them sa NSIC. Para sa NSIC. We are now in the process of registering this in cluster. In cluster. Ibig sabihin, acknowledging the efforts yung nagko-collect at saka we also tracing the origin of this only to find out baka ang ganang-galing nasa Batangas na iyon sa makita man sa cluster. So, ang tanong kung saan pwede uh, may nagbebenta pero di ko masabi unless they will they will present themselves here kasi hindi naman kami ma-assure din na binibenta nila ay kasama doon sa totoong Criollo. So, uh, then how much how many plants Ganon pa rin ang ganito. I guess that give you the background of Criollo because we have also Criollos here plus other areas na visit namin na nung naghanap-hanap pa kami sa, sa, sa gilagid ng Pilipinas, ito ng mabundok, iyan, etc. We found out na ang Criollo, you cannot treat Criollo like Trinitario. The more you prone it, the more maging weak siya. Gusto ng Criollo ay yung shaded environment kasi ang Criollo ay galing sa bundok. Kumbaga ni Tebo, yun talaga siya. Ibig sabihin, ang agronomic uh, management sa Criollo could be could differ with the Trinitario. So if you have Criollos of your own, especially those who are here, uh, uh, minimize pruning. Kasi nagwi-weekend siya. And allow shading para makuan siya, para ganahan siya mag-grow. And then, then just continue the cultural management, but you cannot we treat them as you know, then another is that um uh uh how could i say uh kung may criollo man at saka uh kasi katulad sa nabi ko kanina meron ngang 100% 100% criollo kung mababa man ang yield pero may mga criollos kasi na lumalabas ngayon na white beans plus may karakteristik na kasama doon sa cluster na iyon, marami na rin siyang yield, maraming pad, etc. Et It's a matter of sa cultural management. So yun, so, so far, sir, yun yun. Kasi ayaw ko mag-study din, baka mag-penpoint mag ako sa mga tao na nagbibenta 
only to find out hindi sila nagbibinta noong totoong Creolio. Yun, sir. Hmm. Okay, thank you for that. We have another question here from Jesse Ann and Earl Coligado. What data logger tool you use on pH and temperature readings? Ah, okay. Uh, we have no data logger for the pH, but we have the temperature. Uh, the one that we are, uh, the USM engineers here are the one creating this one here. And uh, it is now in the stage of, uh, tulad ng kanina, pinakita dito na, saan na yun? Uh, ayun na. Ah, ito. Ayan siya. Ayan siya. Ito yung temperature lager na nakatas yung probe dyan sa loob at nire-read lang niya. Ganun. So, tapos, ang data, ma-input lang siya. Ma-input um, siya dyan. Tapos, ilagay lang sa computer just to for the, for the analysis. Yun, ang ganyan, sir. So, in other words, hindi pa siya commercialized. I don't know kung meron na bang commercialized na commercialized na temperature lager. I do not know. Para ito yung latest na kuwan nila and they will have validation for this one and for commercialization maybe in a year or two. But for now, you can in exchange of that one, you go for manual temperature monitoring. Ganon din naman siya. Hindi na kailangan yun. Yun lang. Ang ginawa namin dito ay dahil pag commercial scale na malakihan, mga corporate big one, nakakatulong siya. Rather than monitoring, magsing mga, mga tao ba sa labor. Yun siya. So, so yun ang status so far, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, from Mr. Chris Santos, the person here. As of now, what is the basic post-harvest standard system recommended by PCIC? Okay. Uh, uh, as far as I know, the harmonized book for production and post-harvest that was created by PCIC or facilitated is that uh, it was on hold for publication because of the... Uh, inclusion on conventional then having learned science based they are now encouraging or promoting this type of post harvest practices that's why we the PCIC has conducted series of trainings in collaboration with ATI and PRDP in different associations entrepreneurs and uh, cooperatives to adapt this however the need is we need to continue to monitor if they have implemented this one, or to provide technical assistance and monitoring so that they can produce the high quality beans, plus helping them where to market this uh, produce. Yes, sir. Okay, from, from Daniel Grace Espinoza, can we use UV lights for drying the cacao seeds if the sun is not available? UV lights. Pwede ba yun? Pag the dry ng cacao? Ah, uh, ganito, sir. Uh, I have not encountered yet, but it's a good opportunity to research that one because UV light has different ranges there to kill the bacteria, to kill the microbes, and there's some ganon siya. So, so we blend niya. So, I am not sure about that, sir, but it's a good opportunity. I will ask the engineers if possible for R&B on that. Okay. So, uh, we have one from uh, Evangeline uh, Guerrero. So lang. Ano po pwedeng gawin ng mga rejected ng cacao beans? Do you have uh, experiments or studies about it? Kung yung mga okay. rejected. Okay. There are several ways of doing it. And uh, one very, very, very nice. Uh, I mean, ganito kasi yan, ano? Napapansin ko kasi, lalo yung pag-Kilipin culture. Pag makita, mag-tablia, tablia, 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 tablia na lang lahat. Ganon. Pag makita magmaruya, maruya, maruya. maruya. <laughs> Hindi ko makita tayo sa Pilipinas. We're in our parlor, we're in our parlor, we're in our parlor. Magkitikit-dikit na yan. Ang point is, there are innovations that you can make of the of the rejected beans. Of course, it could be um, tawag nito, uh, recycled into feed maybe. Another, itong isa maganda, si Ma'am Irene, gumawa siya ng handicraft. Nakikita niya yung mga rejected beans ginawa niya ng mga earrings, mga bracelet, etc. and it's selling hot cakes with a good quality, international quality. Mam Irene naginagawa niya. And Irene was really amazed what this are rejects. And of course, and other kinds of innovations. And uh uh tawag dito. Uh perhaps you can of course, ito na yung mga mga feeds, mga etc. ganun siguro, bakwan siya. 
Another is that yung, because I remember product development, itong sa mga, uh, ano yung uling nga, sir? Mga uling? Uh, from Cacao Pads. Mm. Ah, okay. Briquet. Briquet. Cacao so, Briquet. Briquet. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, uh, Briquets, uh, sa Cacao Pads naman tayo, no? Of course, part of the byproducts and yeah, how we could recycle this. One, uh, ginagawa dito sa training is so making of briquettes. Ma mahal pala ang kilo na ito. Mag mahal ang kilo sa briquette, yeah. briquette yan. So in other words, itong ginagamit sa mga maginasal, mga, mga kuwan kasi smokeless siya. Mm -hmm. And then, we can make use of this one as uh, parang isa sa mga innovations for utilizing product development. Ganun siya. And uh, of course, you cannot make use, I mean, making use of pads as fertilizers are somewhat critical because baka mapasama yung kuwan tawag nito yung uh, phytophthora palmivora, yung padrat na mga padrat. infected na mga pads gawing fertilizer, balik sa lupa, ay, impyerno naman lupa, nandun na yung kilom. So, ganun ba? So, in other words, yun ang mga potential uh, avenues doon sa mga rejects and other mga byproducts or mga products. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, do we have any genome testing sa cacao? Ah, ganito sir. Uh, we there in our in our new project, we have yes, now the full. We are now making full genome sequence of Creolios that we have, particularly those belonging to the to the to the Creolio, Creolio cluster. We also have genome sequencing for the uh, insect varieties, and uh, so we have submitted some samples already. And what? we will what? know what? the details of this one uh, once we get the data because we would like to know how much Creole you early there. Although meron ng initial analysis noon, doon sa Australia, but these are partial sequences only. We are having a genome sequencing of this one para we could integrate yung genome ng Creole you doon sa ating mga Trinitary. We look forward to conventional and molecular breeding para sa cacao para integrate yung yung masarap, mataas ang yield, at saka resistance. Yan siya. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, Consul Army raised her hand earlier. Is Consul Army still around? I think she'll be asked raising a question. Consul Army, or a comment? I can't check if she's sir, still around. Sir, na po siya. Nawala na siya. Okay, apa, okay, okay. Apa. So, my dear friends, I think uh, we have still have tons of questions here. And time check, it's already 4.15. No? Uh, we will be entertaining the last three questions. It's okay with you, uh, Dr. Edward Berlan? Sir? sir? Uh, last three questions because we still have okay, a ton of questions here. But okay. it's already 4.15. No? So, could we entertain three more questions? Another one is, is from here, from uh, G.V. Gonzalez. Sir, have you published the results of your research paper? I'd like to read more on it. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Have you published the results of your research? Ah, ah, we, we have not yet published because as of this time, we will be doing validation of this. Although we have identified this technology, the, the fermentation, etc., uh, we the because we don't have the available seeds right now, so we will be doing validation studies starting May and June where the seeds are available. So, hindi pa, sir. Hindi pa. But we okay. have already provided the leaflets there. If you want those, we can provide those. Sir. Okay. Uh, I think you would like to request PCIC no? to reproduce uh, your initial result or initial lef leaflets prepared no? so that uh, we could give to our listening and participating audiences. So another uh, question here we have from Brian Perez. No? Ano pong alternative na kahoy would pwede gamitin natin sa mga fermentation boxes? So do you have recommended uh, type of food? Like lawaan po ba uh, ang nasa sample photos nyo? Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Actually, maraming Puan, maraming mga kahoy, but based on those experts previously studied, is that ito mga fruit-based na mga kahoy, mga santol, mga uh, uh, mga ganon na pansya. Then some some in our in our in our study uh, in our survey, some even use durian like that, mm -hmm. but do not use the rubber, do not because of the of the 
as well as another yung ano nga yung good na kwan sir yung per, mas, masyadong kwan ah uh, yung isa sir yung ginagamit sa pangbagwa ng bahay uh, yung ano, famous luan, ngayon mga okay, Jimilina ah mga Jimilina no Jimilina like that but for the other hardwood luan because they have so we have some restrictions especially sa the ENR but if these are they can they use the especially the fruit based and also we are now currently studying the different types of woods and we'll have that data uh once we get we get those seeds that na para sa beans para matest namin para magkaroon ng ma numerical or quantitative data on it yes ma'am what about coco lumber ah ang oh. ang problema sa coco lumber coconut lumber ah yeah some there are some notions about coconut lumber because uh ang kwan kasi sa structure ng ng wood is that mga perforated siya and depende sa stage etc i think we need to do some research as well on that because of that limitation depending on the age of the wood and also of the of the of the may ito yung mga butas-butas nila doon para it, we cannot say definitively it's good or what because we have not said. I think we will include that one in our research so that we can have a definitive answer. Thank you. Hello, Blair. How about mango tree? Ano dyan na si Mapun? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Mga consul. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I, um, thank you for giving me the floor. Um, may... Ahead, I remember sir. that uh, during the seminar, during the seminar, uh, Steve commented that when we he saw the boxes with the nails, uh, can you comment on that? Ang ang okay. effectos sa nails sa uh, boxes. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, ma'am. So, yes, I rem thank you for putting uh giving that one. Actually, don't sa boxes na pinapresent ko sa inyo na mga dimensions, you don't have to use the nail. Yeah, you can use that wooden yung tawag nito pang ipit doon kasi when you use the nail magrarust siya iitim yung kuan nakaapekto sa fermentation the source of mga spoilage noong mga beans kaya uh, hindi encourage magamit ng nail sa pag in between sa wood pang papan but you can use tawag nito yung wooden na mga nails or yung may tinatawag na hindi yung kinakalawang na nail ang tawag doon uh -huh. yun siya huwag yung mga iron nails because it will rust and the acid kasi ang involved acidity so kaya nag magpasa deteriorate din ang maapektuhan ng mga beans yun ma'am thank you so hindi gamitin so hindi gamitan natin ng nails no ang paggawa natin sa ating mga fermentation boxes okay so no, no, I, no, yes no, no, no. Can I, can I? go ahead go ahead uh, sir Edwin uh, no lipo ah uh -huh. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Ah, pwede naman yeah. natin siguro, sir, gamitin yung ano, uh, wood. O yung wood epoxy para magdikit uh, po yung, ano, yung wood. Except, uh, ah. except of nail, you can use uh, wood. Uh, yung, uh, epoxy wood. Epoxy wood. Epoxy wood epoxy. Pandikit. Yung parang wood. Uh, pandikit parang pandikit man yun? Pandikit din sa wood para magdikit ano siya. Magdikit siya. Uh, we have not test we have not used that one unless we will experiment it anong effect kasi acid siya no kwan kwan siguro what what is what we have here is that yung wooden na nail at saka yung isang nail na hindi nagkalawang ganun i don't know kung pandikit siya what will be the effect ng acid doon i'm not sure i cannot answer hmm. okay thank you uh may we have the last question please hello minong nail daw uh, Tita Chari, ano ba yan? I read Hello? from the chat kasi what the name of the nail? There's a suggestion. Is it aluminum, aluminum. nail? Aluminum. Aluminum, sir. Sir Edward, aluminum instead of uh, yung nails na yung pako na, no? aluminum pwede ba? Aluminum. Basta hindi nagkalawang na kuwan. Nakalimutan ko na kasi term rock eh. Basta mayroong nail na hindi iron-based na kuwan. Yung aluminum, okay. may aluminum ba nagkakalawang? Depende oh, sa wala. level. Uh -huh. Steel, steel. 
So basta hindi nakakalawang. Hindi ka nakalawang na ano. Oh. So stainless there, steel siguro. Stainless stainless na ano. Nails. Oh. Basta basically as what you have mentioned, uh, hindi magagamit yung nails na magkakalawang, no? Magkakalawang uh, na nails, no? Yes sir. Uh -huh. Okay. But traditionally, pwede yung ano ginagamit natin, kahoy pa rin, ang ginagamit uh -huh. natin na nails, no? Yung uh, anong tawag natin sa Bisaya diyan na uh, tarugo. Uh, tarugo. Oo, tawag natin sa Bisaya tarugo instead of using nails, uh, tarugo ang ginagamit. Ang ginagamit yung wood steel. Uh -huh. uh, ang paggawa ng ano, paggawa ng Okay, so yeah. at this yes sir. Uh, there's a way there's a way of constructing the box. Okay. If you're going to use the nail, you make sure you nail it from the outside going in. Don't use the nail from the inside. Yeah, from the outside you nail it. Wag mo lang ipalampas doon sa wood that will go inside the box. Oh, okay. So it's a, actually a, a carpentry a carpenter can do that eh. Ah. Uh, basta hindi lang lalagpas sa kahoy. Na no, kasi pag mababasa na yun na yun. Oh, oh, oh. So, Magre yeah. Okay, magre-react yan. Okay, as much as we wanted to entertain all your questions here, we still have 23 or uh, 30 questions still uh, on our chat box and in uh, Facebook live. However, It's already 4.20, 4.25 in the afternoon. I think this is the first episode or the first episode since we start that uh, we, have, we have 338 no? uh, viewers until this time. No? And we have more than 400 when we started. No? So I think uh, more and more uh, individuals and organizations are interested to listen and appreciate uh, the new learnings no about uh, cacao processing and anything about cacao no? so i think uh, we have to uh, uh, end uh, our conversation this afternoon and we are very thankful uh, for ev for everyone uh, joining us and we are thankful also to doc ed uh, bailan for sharing his expertise uh, this afternoon we still have a number of topics lined up for everyone no? uh, every month For the information of everyone, uh, uh, for the next uh, episode, we have uh, uh, Mr. Peter Cruz, who will be discussing with us the basics of cacao farm establishment. So we are inviting again everyone to please join us next month. So at this point, my dear friends, uh, we would like to uh, present the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Edward Barlaan for his expertise. Uh, sharing his expertise this afternoon. Could you ask the uh, secretary to please uh, flash the certificate of appreciation to uh, Dr. Doc Ed, please? Dr. Yes. Ed, please stop sharing for... Oh, I stop sharing pala ako, no? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Juan, Grace, okay na? Okay, okay. okay. Can uh, I share my love? Okay na po, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Share your love to everyone. Okay, could you? Okay, so for and in behalf of the Philippine Cacao uh, Industry Council and for the Philippine Cacao Industry Association, we wish to express our deep gratitude and uh, give the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Edward Balan, the Professor Erem Emeritus of the University of Southern Mindanao, in grateful appreciation for sharing his time and expertise as a resource person of the topic on the topic cacao fermentation drying and bean grading technology during the first episode of Sapang Cacao at Chocolate season 4 webinar series held on February 7 2024 via Zoom and Facebook live given the 7th day of February 2024 signed Consul Army Lopez Garcia, the chairperson of the Philippine Cacao Industry Council and president of the Philippine Cacao Industry Association. So again, for and behalf of uh, Consul Army Lopez Garcia, we wish to thank you, Dr. Edward Laan, for sharing your time and expertise for this afternoon's session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for lahat. Lahat sa PCIA, PCIC, PCIC people, at saka yung mga, yan, si ma'am Irene, na magaling maggawa ng kuan. <laughs> ng mga earrings. Ang ganda talaga. 
to other all the participants maraming salamat sa inyo and uh, at your service uh, palagi sa inyo para sa inyong okay. para sa inyong lahat thank you thank you dr edward balan thank you doc we love you Yes, we love you too. Thank you. Again, I would like to invite everyone on the next episode. Thank you, Doc. The basic farm establishment by Mr. Peter Z. Cruz, the service provider of DTA Rapid, Dabo del Sur, in Dabo del Norte, Sangani, Surigao, del Sur, and Sultan Kudarat. So, again, we're inviting everyone on March 6, 2024, still at 1.30 to 4 p.m. Uh, for the next episode, uh, Basics of Cacao Farm Establishments. So at this point, my dear friends, to give the closing remarks, may we call Ms. Charita Puente Spina, member of the Fi Philippine Cacao Industry Council and the board, a member of the board of, uh, board of director of the Philippine Cacao <laughs> Industry Association and the owner of Malagos AgriVenture for the closing remarks. Tita Cha. Yeah, thank you, Blair. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate PCIA for having all of these UKT uh, episodes. Imagine it's four seasons. And it certainly shows that PCIA would really want to reach out reach out to all the farmers, the cow farmers, uh, the stakeholders of this very, very beautiful commodity and very much for the economic uh, enrichment of a farmer's life with their for first, uh, where they can get their income for their family. First, congratulations to also to Blair for being be still be here since we started our <laughs> UKT. Congratulations, Blair. Thank you Thank for you. your cooperation. <laughs> Certainly, we want to hear your voice. And to Chris Padriga, Chris, congratulations. Really. When I invited you to join PCQA for 2021, I really wanted to reach out to all the cocoa farmers from the re regions one, two, three, down to the uh, farthest regional councils to send their beans for this PCQA and indeed we got a gold with your uh, beans. Uh, and indeed, it gives a long way for our uh, industry having a gold uh, cacao beans. Of course, we got the invitation of Cordillera for the first chocolate festival out up there in Luzon. I know. I know for several years ago that the people in the Cordilleras really have been into cacao growing and they have very good beans and they have very good, I think, fermented beans because they have been uh, acclaimed as having good chocolate drinks. By that I mean, Isabella State University have started really to go even into sensory. And of course, this uh, episode now on fermentation, drying, and bean grading quality, indeed with Dr. Edward Barlaan. But Doc, I'm sorry to say, but I cannot follow through all of the scientific uh, things that you put there. I'm sorry, but uh, your friend here no longer thinks about all of those. <laughs> I would just like to ask if you can make it a little simpler so that farmers could understand them in their actual way of doing things. Maybe all of this that you had, I will be very good 
when we have the cooperatives consolidation, all of the beans, and that they would have some, you know, more uh, scholastic, if I say, uh, uh, I mean, maybe some managers there to study really how to understand what happens during the fermentation. But a farmer, an ordinary farmer would just like maybe to how to know how hot is 45 degrees by putting their hands into their uh, fermentation boxes. And indeed, uh, there was a question on where to get uh, the right siblings. I'd like to share this knowledge that the Bureau of Plant Industry have this program of nurseries having their seedlings tagged because these tagged seedlings come from uh, mother trees that have been identified by the Bureau of Plant Industries as true, true uh, trees of whatever variety or genetic variety it is. So it's tagged. Oh, we had a lot of, seed, of questions from the over 400 attendees of this episode. And uh, they were very well answered by Dr. Barlaan. And on the issue of Creolio, I appreciate very much his uh, thinking about this. And I would like to really set a motion if USM would really look into the growing of the Criollo as to why, why in the first place, the different Latin, Latin countries don't really have all of their plants as Criollos, or, or why did they have a Trinitario hybrid, or why they did hybrids instead of all of the Criollos or the Forasteros that they want to recommend to developing countries that would like to go into the uh, growing of cacao. Okay, so another thing I'd like to ask Dr. Barlaan. Doc? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I heard in your introduction, you have a lot of studies, uh, awarded uh, thesis on certain ways as in agriculture. And I would like to ask if we can have a UK tea with you on a regeneration of senile trees. Because in, in Davao, I know the old plantations <laughs> have been here for the last 50 years. And a lot of these trees are still around us. And we really have to do something about these old, old trees. So thank you again. I'm very happy for this uh, opportunity to give a closing remarks. And uh, I hope we will have more uh, beautiful uh, interaction to keep our industry growing. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Tita Cha, for your closing remarks for and behalf of the Philippine Cacao Industry Council. and. For the Philippine Cacao Industry Association, we wish to thank you for joining us in this episode of Osak Pang Cacao at Chocolate. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Salamat. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 La 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 Alam mo bang sintamis ng chocolate ng mga mukhang nakangiti? Alam mo bang kasing puro ng kakao ang pag-ibig na pag-ina? Oh.
Chocolate, just sit and relax, makinig at matuto. Welcome to Usapang Kakao at Chocolate. Welcome to Usapang Kakao at Chocolate. La 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 Alam mo bang sintamis ng tsokolating mga mukhang nakangiti? Alam mo bang kasing puro ng kakao ang pag-ibig kapag inaraw-araw? So let's taste and see the goodness of kakao at tsokolate. Tara na 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 sa usapang magpapapapasaya at magpapamanga sa iyo Usapang kakao at tsokolate Just sit and relax, makinig at matuto Welcome to Usapang Kakao at Tsokolate Welcome to Usapang Kakao at Tsokolate La 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 la